Imagine a boy who ended up losing his entire family in an accident, then acquired a gigantic trauma and can no longer talk to anyone apart from his childhood friend. However, one day, one of his teachers tried to kill him, but he ended up discovering that this man was his friend's older brother. In reality, she is part of a family of spies and as her brother is overprotective, he wants to make sure no one gets close to her. However, with the help of her other brothers, they managed to sort it out, but the boy had to marry her best friend. Now, as part of this non-traditional family, he will have many adventures and will be trained to protect his wife. I'm Lancelot and in today's anime recap we'll be watching Mission Yozakura Family. And guys, with this new anime season coming up, I'm going to make an effort to bring you as many anime as I can. So help me out by leaving a like and commenting down here. Also, subscribe to the channel, we're aiming for 100,000 subscribers and I'm counting on your support. The story begins with the protagonist saying that we only realize what is important to us when we lose it and how easy it is to lose. As a result, he became afraid of losing someone important again, as happened with his family, and decided that it was best to isolate himself, without letting them get too close. The only one Tayo feels comfortable talking to is his best friend, who promised him at his family's funeral that she would always be there for him. His classmates even try to get him to get along, but the protagonist seems to have increased his level of shyness and can barely respond to them. As soon as the boys leave Tayo's side, Mitsumi approaches him and talks to his best friend. While giving him the lunch she has prepared for the two of them the girl tells him that he should move on, because his parents wouldn't be happy if he carried on like this forever and when she went to give some of her lunch to Tayo, the vice principal Kiyoichiro ended up taking it for himself. The man is in their office to ask the protagonist to come to his office after class and this leaves Mitsumi intrigued. While he's on his way to the vice principal's office, the protagonist remembers his family's accident and thinks that it was after that day that he started having trouble connecting with other people. Once there, Kiyoichiro starts showing the boy his collection of photos of Mitsumi, which makes the protagonist start to think that this man is a pervert and he even considers the idea of denouncing him. But then Tayo starts to wonder why a vice principal has photos of his student from when she was a little girl and at that moment Kiyoichiro starts to reveal the real reason he called him there. The vice principal tells him that he had been watching Mitsumi all this time and getting rid of all the undesirable boys who approached her, including a recent case when an older boy asked her out and Kiyoichiro gently used his hands around the boy's neck to make him understand that he shouldn't go after her anymore. The man then takes a knife and puts it near Tayo's neck, explaining that he had turned a blind eye to him because he had been friends with Mitsumi since she was a child, but for the moment, he could no longer do that. Just then, the protagonist hears the vice principal say that he is Mitsumi's brother and is surprised. Suddenly, a person with white hair and white clothes enters through the office window, ordering Kiyoichiro to leave Tayo alone and, at the push of a button, a bright light appears, causing the person and the protagonist to disappear. At first, Tayo fainted and when he woke up, he was in a different place, with people he had never seen before, apart from Mitsumi. The girl introduces these strangers as her brothers and this is more of a surprise for the protagonist. Then she tells him each one's name and reveals that they are a family of spies, a secret that has been very difficult to keep for all these years. There are even others scattered around the world, but one of the most popular is Kiyoichiro, who Futaba says is flawed as a person, but great in every other respect. The man chose the protagonist as his next target because they had received a tip that someone was planning to take Mitsumi's life, so Kiyoichiro became even more overprotective and wanted to get rid of any threat. Futaba tells us that years ago Mitsumi had an accident because of Kiyoichiro. She suffered a near-fatal injury, including the white streak in her hair, and since then Kiyoichiro has blamed himself and ended up creating an abnormal obsession with his sister. The protagonist was the only one Kiyoichiro let go, but he always had a hatred for the boy, so when they received that tip, 
the man found an excuse to get rid of Tayo. Suddenly, sirens warned that Kyoichiro had arrived at the house and the group of brothers began to prepare for a fight. As the protagonist didn't want any of this to happen because of him, Futaba explained that there was another way to stop Kyoichiro from taking his life he could marry Mitsumi, as family members can't take each other's lives. Although it's a good solution, asking Tayo, who has just lost her family, to enter another one is a bit much and Mitsumi recognizes this. So for the time being it's decided that they will fight for the girl to buy time and hide the protagonist. However, Kyoichiro appears in their midst without anyone noticing him and it is Futaba who calls him to the fight. It's difficult to defeat the man, as he has a special weapon called the Steel Spider and it's like there are webs made of steel that can cut through anyone. Mitsumi and Kengo go to hide the protagonist, while the rest delay Kyoichiro, so the boy is hidden behind a painting. As soon as Kyoichiro arrives in the room where the rest are, he notices Kengo's disguise as Mitsumi and then asks her to deliver him to where Tayo is, but the girl refuses because her friend has already suffered too much in this life. As a result, her brother tells her that he won't let her leave the house or use the internet anymore, so that Mitsumi can be kept safer and safer. He approaches the knife that the girl was holding and sticks it in himself, saying that the day he swore to protect her, he promised himself that he would endure any pain for her and I believe that because she has no choice, Mitsumi just accepts. However, Tayo decides to come out of hiding and do something for his best friend who has been by his side all this time. The protagonist realizes that her brother is like him, the man is also afraid of losing someone important to him, so he ends up being overprotective. The protagonist tells Mitsumi that he will agree to do as Futaba says and when her best friend goes to throw the ring that will signify their engagement, her brother uses his special weapon and holds the object, saying that he will not allow that to happen. Meanwhile, Tayo puts his hands on the wires and even though he cuts them, he takes the ring and puts it on his finger, leaving Kyoichiro impressed. The protagonist thanks his friend for everything she has done to protect him and promises that, from now on, he will take on the role of protecting her. Apart from Kyoichiro, everyone was excited by the news and Futaba approached her brother to tell him that he will now be responsible for teaching Tayo how to protect Mitsumi. After all those events, the protagonist went home to rest and the next morning, after waking up, Tayo is surprised by the presence of Kyoichiro in his room and the man has a knife pointed at him, which frightens the boy. Kyoichiro even tries to hit him to test the protagonist's reflexes and says that this is the Yozakura family's good day, adding that his training has already begun, so the man uses his special weapon and traps Tayo in its wires. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Mitsumi prepares the protagonist's lunch and decides to go to his room to see what's going on. When she arrives, she finds her future husband being made into a puppet. Kyoichiro turns down the intensity of the wires at his sister's request and then jumps out of the window with the two of them, telling them to run. While the three of them hadn't even reached the ground, the place where the protagonist lived exploded. Kyoichiro says that it's because someone planted a bomb in the house, but the man will explain later and says that he's going to put his rivalry with Tayo on hold. First, Kyoichiro has to explain what the Yozakura family's mission is and it boils down to protecting Mitsumi. The three of them go to a vehicle to finish their conversation and Kyoichiro tells them that Shinzo, the green-haired brother, had just sent a message warning them that there was indeed a bomb in the protagonist's house, it was in the kitchen and the target was Mitsumi who was alone in the room. It turns out that many in the spy world already know about the news from the day before, so now Tayo has to be on his guard at all times. The reason Mitsumi is a target is because she is the 10th head of the Yozakura family, which we'll understand now. The family lineage has produced dozens of generations of descendants with superhuman abilities, yet there has always been an ordinary person, known as the head or head of the family. Even if the head doesn't have powers like the others, the person was raised like the others and inherited their genes, which would be passed on to the next generation. In this way, 
Those with powers protect the head of the family, because it is the head of the family who will pass on these talents to the next generation. And that's how the Yozakuras have always prospered. However, for Kyoichiro and the other siblings, it doesn't matter that much and they just want Mitsumi to live happily. But she's the one who makes a point of maintaining the tradition, because she thinks it's unfair for everyone to play their part in protecting the family business and for her not to have the same obligation. So she takes it upon herself to play the role of head. This makes Kyoichiro admire her more and more and wonder why she likes Taiyo, whom the man calls a clown. The man tells her that since she is the boss, she will have to make her presentation to the underworld as the leader of the family and to do this, she needs to acquire knowledge of the ordinary world. This means that anyone who has anything against the family will try to end the girl's life, taking advantage of her exposure. At this point, Taiyo realizes how true what Kyoichiro is saying is, as the vehicle begins to come under attack, the enemy group tries to stop the car or finish off those inside, but the vehicle is bulletproof and we have a great driver at the wheel who is the Goliath Kitten. Despite this, Kyoichiro is annoyed that the enemies have disturbed his tea time and decides to finish them off very quickly. This is already a good demonstration of how Taiyo must always be on his guard and, to this end, Kyoichiro has given him a gun to take care of Mitsumi at school and warns the protagonist that if the girl shows up with a scratch, there will be consequences. So when he arrives in the classroom, Taiyo starts going through all the lockers and their classmates find the boy's attitude strange, especially as he is more cautious than usual. Back in the car, Kyoichiro shows the protagonist who is responsible for the bomb in his house. His nickname is Tamaya and he is a reputable bomber. His explosives are top-notch and Kyoichiro has even called him once to help him defeat another group, but in the life of spies, your allies can become your enemies if you pay them a good price. The man explains that the only one Taiyo can trust is himself and shows what Tamaya's flaw is he's addicted to social networks, which means he announces his next steps on them, so he can be a little more prepared. In his latest posts, one of the three bombs has already been used, so that means there are two more for the protagonist to find. During class, Taiyo watched his classmates every move and always stayed close to his future wife, until when he was on the court, he noticed a strange silhouette inside the school, so he decided to go and check it out. When the boy goes into the infirmary, a woman appears behind him, warning him that it will be closed today. So the protagonist goes into the classroom to be near his beloved, who is talking to her friends about rumors that there are ghosts in the school. Meanwhile, Taiyo receives the notification that Tamaya posted, which said that the last bomb has finished setting and then his classmates show up offering him a chocolate. But because he's thinking about too many things, instead of freezing as usual, he ends up accepting and eating the candy. So the protagonist only realizes that he's been socializing when the three boys comment on it and so he passes out. When he wakes up, as the infirmary was closed, he finds himself in Kyoichiro's room. Mitsumi took him there to rest and the boy started a conversation with her, about the girl having been by his side all this time and him never realizing how difficult her life was and said that he only thought about himself and his suffering, being selfish. However, Mitsumi stops him from continuing this nonsense and explains that she was the one who chose him to be her husband, then thanks him for proposing. At this point, the protagonist looks at his beloved's face and notices that there is a bomb on the ceiling of the room. We then see everything explode and Mitsumi's other siblings are at school until one of them is the woman who talked about the infirmary earlier with the protagonist. Returning to the protagonist, he manages to protect his beloved from the explosion and realizes that throughout the day, the enemy has lured them to Kyoichiro's room, because he knew that Taiyo wouldn't leave Mitsumi's side, so he would hit the girl and, with this in mind, the boy realizes that there is a mini-bomb stuck to his clothes and without thinking too much, decides to throw himself out of the building so as not to end his wife's life. However, Kyoichiro arrives just then and catches him. 
He was surprised that the protagonist had understood everything in time and with his steel spider, the man deactivated the bomb. Kyoichiro takes the opportunity to teach Taiyo one more thing that he should doubt even himself, but never his family, because no matter how much one of them has to sacrifice, they will never let the other die. Then the other siblings show up and we discover that almost all of them were at the school because they had heard that it would be the protagonist's first mission, so they wanted to see how he would do. Shinzo managed to find the enemy and took him to where everyone was. So Kyoichiro placed the bomb he had deactivated in his body and threw him out of the building, where we can later see the explosion. Even so, Tamaya proved to be a real fan of social media, posting until the last second of his life. Later on, we see that the protagonist has moved in with the Yozakura family, since his own practically no longer exists and, although Kyoichiro doesn't like it very much, he has nothing to do, since Mitsumi has reminded him that, in any case, she and Taiyo will be man and wife. The next day, Taiyo woke up from a nightmare feeling that he had to work harder to learn to protect Mitsumi and when he got out of bed, he ended up stepping on Goliath, so he was attacked. Later, Mitsumi bandages the protagonist and apologizes, as she was the one who asked the dog to stand guard in Taiyo's room, since she was afraid that Kyoichiro would do something else. In the next scene, we see the protagonist talking to Futaba, and he asks her to give him the hardest training, so that, however much Taiyo suffers at first, he believes that, in the end, he will be ready to protect his fiance. Futaba then shows him what the Yozakura family's training is like and the boy suffers. So, before being included in the Yozakura family exercises, Futaba asks Taiyo to continue living with them for a month and the experience will count as a trial, after which, if he can stand it, she will pass on the training. It turns out that the mansion is equipped with several traps for spy training, meaning that the house and daily life itself is already a training ground. Futaba believes that if he doesn't master the traps in the mansion, he won't be able to withstand the training, which is why she asked him to take the test during the month. On the first day, the protagonist finds himself in several near-death situations and at breakfast, Taiyo learns that if the house accepts his presence, the traps will no longer be activated for the boy. Unfortunately, the protagonist finds out the hard way that the meals are also part of the training, as they mix poison with the food so that the body gradually gains resistance, except for Mitsumi, which is prepared in the normal way. The effect of the toxic liquid on Taiyo's body makes him rush to the bathroom, but in order to use it, he has to either figure out the password, which changes every minute, or pick the lock, and he doesn't know how to do either. Over the next few days, although it takes a while for Taiyo to learn how to escape traps and use weapons, he starts to do better. So one more thing joins his daily training, which is to wear a 30 kilograms t-shirt. One evening, Mitsumi calls her fiancé to talk and expresses her concern about him because, as much as he's trying too hard, she doesn't think it's necessary. In the middle of the conversation, she tells him how she came to like him, even though they had always been neighbors in elementary school. Mitsumi suffered with the other girls because of her hair, and no matter how much she tried to dye it, the strands wouldn't take. Then, one day, some girls grabbed her and wanted to cut her hair by force, but Taiyo showed up in time and snatched the scissors from the hand of the girl who seemed to be the leader. Then the protagonist cut her hair and the girls thought he was crazy, so they ran away. Once they were alone, Taiyo told Mitsumi that if she found herself in trouble again, to call him. Over the next few days, with Shinzo's help, the protagonist developed his ability to use weapons. And when Shein is talking to Shinzo, she comments that Taiyo isn't developing his skills in the normal time, which could mean that he has talent or something else involved. After three weeks in the place, the protagonist is still suffering from the toilet door and now a problem has arisen with the boy, he seems to be ill. So Taiyo is taken to Nineo's laboratory and diagnosed with a fever brought on by extreme tiredness. However, it's a bit more than that, Futaba recognizes a fake skin on the protagonist's body and when she takes it off, 
she sees that he's full of bandages, so she realizes that the other brothers are training him so that he can survive in the place and even Naneo is in on it, giving Tayo some things to keep him awake and give him more time to train. Futaba thinks that what Tayo is doing is a suicide mission and explains that as much as he really wants to learn how to take care of Mitsumi, he first needs to go through the daily training without taking any shortcuts, taking the time he needs to learn, so the older sister gives him a book to study while he recovers. Now alone, Futaba laughs to herself and realizes that what's keeping Tayo alive isn't his talent or anything else, but his desire to protect Mitsumi and his love for her, which must be close to insanity. The older sister even begins to think that perhaps the protagonist is better suited to protecting Mitsumi than she had imagined. In the next scene, we see Tayo a little better and he finally manages to open the bathroom door, which causes everyone to celebrate his success in the ring to recognize him as a member of the Yozakura family. This means that he will now start receiving the same training as the others and the 30 kg shirt will now be 100 kg, and the level of difficulty of the traps in the house will also change from normal to very difficult. The next day, we see Mitsumi quietly cooking, when he suddenly comes across the protagonist arriving in women's clothing in the kitchen. Tayo explains that he was just trying to improve his disguise skills, but it becomes even more embarrassing when Kengo arrives to bother him. And to stop his brother, Mitsumi leaves a bump on his and Kyoichiro's head, as once again he was acting strangely. Meanwhile, Shinzo just watched a normal morning of the Yozakura family. Later, we see Shinzo and the protagonist talking. He's going out on a mission that he says is easy, where he'll have to steal an original counterfeit money sign and says it shouldn't take long. Later, at school, Tayo is acting like a superhuman without realizing it, but he has evolved so much in his abilities that some people are already calling him a ninja and Mitsumi warns him about it, so that he manages a little, otherwise he could end up attracting the wrong attention. In the next scene, we see the couple working on the financial and administrative side of the family, Mitsumi has asked the protagonist to help with this and he is perplexed by the amount of things his boss has to deal with. In addition to the piles of paperwork, Mitsumi has to interrupt his work to go after Kengo and ask him about a report he should have brought. When he enters Kengo's room, Tayo is faced with a huge mountain of jumbled things and a mess everywhere. Mitsumi gets straight to the point and tells Kengo that he needs the missing papers, but he's not in the mood to help look for them and although Tayo takes the lead, in the end Kengo runs off to hide from the couple because the boss has decided that she should discipline him. So that Kengo wouldn't run away from the house, Mitsumi activated hibernation mode, so that he would be forced to hide inside and, in principle, it wouldn't take long to find him. Meanwhile, Shinzo ends up falling into a trap on his mission. Returning to the protagonist, they start looking for Mitsumi's room and their Tayo discovers that she has various hobbies. So his wife explains that since she couldn't go out anywhere, she had to find some things to make the time pass. Then we see a little bit of each of the rest of the family's rooms Sheen's is technological, Nineo's looks like a laboratory, Goliath's is all gold and Kyoichiro's is as we already imagined, full of photos of Mitsumi. After searching almost everywhere, Kengo is discovered, he was hiding in the paintings of the residence and Tayo goes after him to catch him. However, when Mitsumi catches up with him, Kengo has already fled, so she gives in and disables the mansion's hibernation. Mitsumi decides that the two of them should go and look for the missing paperwork, but as they enter the room, she handcuffs Tayo. It turns out that Mitsumi knew that Kengo had lured Tayo into using his disguise, but the protagonist does some things that can only be recognized by paying attention, such as only entering the room after his wife. And the way his sister talks to him reminds him of his mother. Later, the protagonist and Kengo end up looking for the missing paperwork together and, in the end, grow closer. In the next scene, while eating, Tayo thinks that Shinzo is taking too long for someone who went on a quick and easy mission. Just then the phone rings and it's him asking for help. 
It turns out that there were more enemies than Shinzo had imagined, so he ended up using all his weapons and now, without them, he's just a helpless person, since his confidence only appears when Shinzo has a weapon in his hand. So Taiyo has to go to the place to help him and although he hasn't had much field training yet, he does very well. After handing Shinzo a gun, they begin their escape plan and everything is going very well, until the protagonist is shot in the leg. The enemy makes Shinzo drop his weapon and in return he will spare Taiyo's life, but the protagonist has already been prepared for this situation and Mitsumi has warned him that if he were to run out of a firearm, Taiyo should throw a simple fork to Shinzo, because in order to protect what he values most, the man would turn the cutlery into a powerful weapon. And that's what happens, and Shinzo finishes off the enemy. He ends up carrying the protagonist home on his back and on the way, he apologizes for what happened, saying that he intends to become stronger to prevent something like this from happening again. However, the scene cuts and we see that someone is violently interrogating the man who shot the protagonist and, as he didn't want to talk, he ended up dying. Also, wondering who will be next, he shows that he is carrying a photo of Taiyo in his hands. While taking a walk and talking to Mitsumi on his cell phone, Taiyo noticed that a car had stopped in front of him. Suddenly, a policeman called Seiji got out of the car and asked the protagonist to go with him to another place. When they arrived, the man showed Taiyo some images of him fighting the bandits from before and said that they were on the dark web. We know that this is the same man we saw at the end of the last episode and he told us about everything Taiyo had already done. Seiji wanted the protagonist to hand over his partners in crime so that he wouldn't be arrested. However, Taiyo doesn't want to give up his family, so the man put something strange in a glass of water and made the protagonist take it by force. However, he was already prepared for something like this, but had to flee from Seiji, who started attacking him with a hammer. When he touched a bag, Taiyo saw blood and discovered that it contained the bodies of some drug dealers. Taiyo was at a loss and when he saw a thread, he understood what it was all about, so he said he wouldn't tell anyone even if his life depended on it. Then, dodging another blow, we realized that Kiyoichiro had been listening to the conversation the whole time. Apparently, Seiji is friends with his older brother and in exchange for helping him with his police investigations, Seiji helps the Yozakura family cover up their activities. In the morning, the protagonist went to school and was very tired because he hadn't slept. In addition, as the school's vice principal, Kiyoichiro showed up to teach in place of the teacher who had to take a day off. During the lesson, when the protagonist had almost fallen asleep, the lunatic threw a chalk at the boy at the speed of sound. Using Morse code, they talked while Kiyoichiro wrote on the board and he told the protagonist that a spy needs to control his sleep in the same way as dolphins, who managed to remain in a constant state of wakefulness. Mitsumi didn't like this at all and, also using Morse code, told Kiyoichiro to stop. However, Taiyo said he didn't mind, as it was necessary training to become stronger. To make things more difficult, Kiyoichiro used sleeping gas to make everyone sleep and as Taiyo also slept, he decided to punish him. However, the protagonist managed to defend himself even though he was asleep. Mitsumi realized that Taiyo was becoming less and less human every day. While Taiyo was reading a magazine about relationships between spies, Mitsumi appeared and when he was about to ask her out, he got a call from Seiji, so he had to go on a mission. Arriving at an amusement park, Taiyo heard what he had to do, find a couple who were carrying customized firearms. When the protagonist looked around to find a suspicious couple, Mitsumi appeared to help him. When they looked around, they saw some suspicious couples, so they decided to follow some of them. They went to a roller coaster, but it was so quiet for the protagonist after everything he had experienced that he ended up falling asleep. They suspected the punk couple, but realized that they were just an ordinary couple. The next is the couple of thugs, but they were also an ordinary couple. Going after the last suspects, Taiyo and Mitsumi were looking for them, until he saw a rose and thought of his beloved. 
The other couple seemed to be the culprits, but just when the protagonist thought they would get their guns, the man asked the woman to marry him. That way, they had no more suspects, until a couple who seemed normal started fighting. Then they both pulled out machine guns and started shooting at everything. The protagonist ran to help a child, but the rose he had bought for Mitsumi ended up being hit, which made him very angry. So, using his special gun, Taiyo put them both to sleep and the police showed up to arrest them. Seiji said that the protagonist had done a good job and we see that Kyoichiro was very angry that Taiyo was in an amusement park with Mitsumi. Once the mission was over, the two decided to enjoy the park as a couple and on the Ferris wheel, Taiyo gave Mitsumi that rose, which made her very happy and they finally had a quiet moment together. In the next scene, we see someone trying to access the Yozakura family network, more specifically, Taiyo's data, however, Shein gets around to it as soon as possible and as soon as she does, we see that on the intruder's computer screen, there are several photos of Taiyo. When morning comes, the woman tells the boy what happened, Shein looks like hell, having spent several sleepless nights and when it was finally time to rest, yet another problem arose. The woman shares with them that she has a strange feeling about the system being hacked, because only family members have the password to access this data, so she believes there's something else going on. On the way to school, Mitsumi and the protagonist begin to receive attacks from a spy who is known for her skill with needles. Her name is Ayaka and she is known for being a hunter spy. It turns out that the girl follows the men she is in love with and as soon as she catches her prey, she uses the needles on the body of her beloved until his life is taken. This means that Taiyo is Ayaka's new passion and she won't rest until she achieves her goal. The girl had already taken a liking to the protagonist due to the videos that were going viral of him on the dark web, however, after a bounty was placed on his head, everything became more and more interesting and now it's not just Ayaka who wants to get Taiyo. She then proves her point when she hits another spy who was on the roof above them. Taiyo explains to her that he can't follow her because he belongs to Mitsumi, who is his fiance, and he needs to protect her. At that moment, they discover how Ayaka entered the family system earlier, it turns out that everything involves Kyoichiro. The man was sought out by her, who asked him to release entry into the system so that Ayaka could get some information and photos of the protagonist. She also asked him if she could take Taiyo for herself and Kyoichiro replied that Ayaka could do whatever she wanted, as long as she didn't hurt or involve Mitsumi. Ayaka explains that she's just starting and then leaves. As soon as class starts, the couple are in for a surprise the spy has joined their class and now the protagonist has to spend the day being careful not to get caught by her. However, at a certain point, already tired of losing, Ayaka puts something on her needles that allows her to control those she has injected with the object. In this way, the girl makes everyone go after Taiyo to hold him down and Mitsumi has to intervene to try to get her to stop this madness. However, just then, another spy, tired of the girls needling him, shows up and shoots in her direction. So Mitsumi protects her, putting himself at risk and this gives Ayaka a new target. Now, she continues with her obsession of wanting to pierce Taiyo, but the girl has also fallen in love with Mitsumi and instead of wanting to do the same to her, we can say that, this time, she has a healthy passion. In the next scene, we see the protagonist with Shein, the technological sister who has invited him to a game night, but in fact this may last a few days and now he is officially introduced into the family. The game is simpler than it looks, he just has to finish off the enemies and then defeat the boss of the stage, however, if he loses his life, he will be faced with a very realistic scene of the end of it. It's worth noting that the villains carry Kyoichiro's face, so no one in the family misses an opportunity to insult him. As they go through their first mission, Taiyo notices that on the TV, a train that was running out of steam has been stopped meaning that this is Shein's way of working and it's not just a game, as it's interconnected with real life. Now the two go on to a more difficult stage, 
where they have to stop a group of rebels who want to invade a government area in real life and unexpectedly. Tayo uses an invincible mode that he doesn't even know how he activated, but it helped him a lot in the mission. They managed to defeat the boss, but that doesn't stop the enemies. So the protagonist has the idea of reviving the enemy and using it to defeat his followers. And although it's unusual, it works. Even Ayaka came in to help, as the girl hacked into the system just in time for the battle, to try and get some photos of Mitsumi and even though she didn't know what it was about, she ended up being useful. As soon as they finished the phase, the girl was caught by the security that Sheehan had implanted in the system. Back in her technological sister's room, she really likes Tayo's video game skills, so she tells him that he can't leave her room until he's completed the games she wants. In the next scene, we see a spy called Oga talking to another spy called Sway about Tayo, who is being advertised in a magazine as Mitsumi's fiancé. However, Sway tells Oga that they should focus on the mission and that he's not at all interested in the protagonist. The scene cuts and we see Tayo training at home. The boy receives a call from Naneo asking him to go to where he is. Because Naneo is on a mission in which a very powerful pill has been created. In fact, it has a bomb inside it that if it explodes, can exterminate all life forms within a radius of 10 kilometers. As a result, the protagonist's older brother has decided to swallow the pill, because as he has a more evolved body than ordinary humans, he will be able to detox the invention, but for this to happen, Nineo gets very sleepy, so Tayo is recruited to go to the place and protect him until the process is completely finished. As soon as he arrives at the site, the protagonist realizes that something is wrong, as the guards are already injured and security has been breached, which doesn't seem to be Naneo's job. We discover that Tayo was right to think that it wasn't Naneo who did it, because two spies hired by the government show up and Sway is one of them. The green-haired man knows the protagonist's name, which puzzles him because he doesn't know anything about these two. Sway and Oga introduce themselves to Tayo, also revealing that they have been hired to neutralize the laboratory. And since the two have no intention of hurting the protagonist, the three decide to advance through the lab together and fight the remaining guards. However, the trio are then split up, because as soon as they reach Naneo, we discover that the mission for the pair is to finish him off, since Naneo has swallowed the pill. Tayo does everything he can not to let this happen, which leads Sway to use his skills and in this way, the protagonist ends up falling to the ground bleeding. The green-haired man even jokes about whether this was the best the Yozakura family had to offer. Sway then decides that he's going to break up with Naneo right away to finish this mission, but he ends up doing nothing when his older brother explains that his body has already detoxed from the pill and so now they have nothing to worry about. Naneo asks Sway to let him treat the wounds and the green-haired man not only allows him to, but gives his brother Yozakura an ointment that heals cut wounds. In the next scene, Tayo wakes up tied to some candles. Wondering who would do this to him, we don't have to think too hard to come up with the same answer, which is Kyoichiro. His older brother is doing this to punish him, because by letting Sway defeat him, he has brought shame on the Yozakura family, since several articles have been published about it which has resulted in increased criticism of the family and the only way for Tayo to restore their good name is to go after Sway to defeat him. Of course, Mitsumi and Naneo don't agree with this, but the protagonist does and is willing to try. The scene then cuts to Tayo on a train. The boy was following Sway, but was discovered by him, who decided to go up to the protagonist to ask what he was doing there. At this point, Tayo tells him that he really needs to improve a lot in order to be on a par with the members of his family and to do this, he will accompany Sway every day, even from afar, to observe him and learn more. The man doesn't mind this, as he believes that the protagonist won't even be able to keep up with him and finds it interesting that the spy announces to his victim that he will be watching him. Sway's main ability is to walk silently, which is very useful in battle. As we saw when he defeated Tayo, 
And now the protagonist will have to learn how he does it or how to defeat him in those moments. In the first few days of following him, Tayo suffered as Sway tore the boy's clothes in public using his ability, which resulted in articles in the spy world about him being a brazen man. After suffering for a few days, Nineo talks to Tayo and tells him that he doesn't understand why he's going so far with this, because what he thinks about them not wanting to have a brother with inferior abilities is a lie. Nineo is one of those who loves the protagonist and believes that he doesn't need to go through this. This conversation helped the boy, as he was able to notice the habits that Sway follows in his battles. So the next day, when Sway attacks him, Tayo manages to block the first blow and hold the man's arm. However, he is then hit as usual, but this makes Sway change his perception of the boy and he now understands why the Yozakura family kept him around. In the next scene, we see that everyone has forgotten about Tayo's defeat by Sway, because something else stands out and that's the articles that contain photos of the protagonist without his clothes on in public. But even so, Mitsumi says that she loves him no matter what anyone says. The scene cuts and we see some spies analyzing a strange politician, but since they failed in their first mission, they thought of using Tayo. Later, we see Mitsumi and the protagonist going somewhere. He was wondering where they were going with so many things, until they ran into Sway. They went to a diner called Hanagaku and when Sway made a completely specific request, they fell into a trap door. In reality, that place is an intelligence unit that supports the government behind the scenes. Suddenly, several traps appeared and while the protagonist tried to save himself, Sway protected Mitsumi with extreme ease. However, just as a giant steel ball was about to crush him, a woman appeared and saved him. In reality, that backpack was full of sweets and Rin is the leader of the place, as well as being a former classmate of Kyoichiro. She is also in love with Mitsumi and was wondering if Tayo would be able to protect the girl. Suddenly, Kyoichiro showed up at the party and they began to battle, where it seemed that they both had the same strength. Sway tried to stop them, but he couldn't even get close, so Mitsumi managed to get in front of them, who were going to hit her. But Tayo appeared and was hit instead of his wife. This made Mitsumi very angry and when he said he wouldn't talk to either of them again, he made them stop. Having survived those blows, Rin saw that Tayo was stronger than he looked, so she decided to talk about the mission. She wants him to go undercover and investigate a politician called Kuroyuri, who is very strange and was doing various criminal things in hiding, using his three twin spies. Suddenly, Sway and Mitsumi put the disguise on Tayo, who goes to the politician as a secretary. The scene cuts and we see Kuroyuri introducing the new secretary to people, until some protesters show up to badmouth the politician. Because of the confusion, one of the stereos was about to fall on one of the demonstrators, but Kuroyuri saved him, saying that it was their right to demonstrate and have different opinions. Once in the ambulance, we see that this was all a plan by the politician to increase his popularity and Tayo was listening in. Later, we see the protagonist trying to find something suspicious in the reports, while the politician and the spies were dancing strangely. In the days that followed, everything was going well for Kuroyuri and Tayo didn't get any information about the bombs he had. Back at the office, they continued dancing, until the protagonist realized that they were talking in Morse code. The next day, Tayo discovered that Kuroyuri was planning a terrorist attack against his political enemies, so he planted a bomb under the stage. However, when he activated the bomb, it exploded elsewhere thanks to Tayo, but because of this, his cover was blown and the protagonist was shot, while Kuroyuri had another bomb. Tayo was already prepared for this, so he managed to save everyone at the scene and before he could get any worse for being outnumbered, Sway showed up. Kuroyuri's spies fled the scene, so he was captured and Tayo was in charge of escorting the villain to Rin. While they were in the transport, Kuroyuri started talking to the protagonist, until he commented on the death of Tayo's family and said that it wasn't just an accident.
Tayo receives a call that shows us that the situation is still problematic, as Sui warns our protagonist that the deputy prime minister has been caught by Kuroyuri's people and that there is a video being broadcast live that is causing people to panic. Somewhere in the middle of the chaos, the real one was replaced by a substitute and now they need to find the man. However, before Tayo can interrogate Kuroyuri, the man shows that he is prepared in case he is caught and he uses his earring, which generates an explosion, to escape. As he carries the driver away from the fire, the protagonist thinks about the things Kuroyuri said about him and his family. When he learns that Tayo survived the attack, Sui tells him that, in fact, Kuroyuri wasn't just a politician, but a spy like them, and his old alias was Kurageo. A few years ago, he was a legendary spy working in the shadows around the world, however, it was believed that he had passed away, and they facilitated his safety so that they could find out what he was planning. In other words, Tayo was used as bait. Meanwhile, Kuroyuri has arrived at the location where the live video is being recorded and reveals to the politician and the population who he really is. Soon afterwards, Tayo also finds them, however, when he starts to fight the man, Kuroyuri demonstrates that he knows all the Yozakura family's combat techniques, which prevents the protagonist from causing him any injury. Kuroyuri reveals that he is doing all this for revenge, because in the past, he was used by politicians as an information collector and to dispose of the people they needed. However, one day, on his daughter's birthday, after a mission, when Kuroyuri comes home to celebrate with the little girl, she comments that he had sent her a present earlier. However, he hadn't done so and before he could do anything, the present exploded and took his daughter's life. So the man decided to fake his own death and be a fake politician to attract those who betrayed him. Now, the last one left is the deputy prime minister and Kuroyuri's team arrives to help him. Meanwhile, Sui is also on the scene to support Tayo and while the boy deals with Kuroyuri, Sui will take care of the others. The twins have element-based abilities and believe they were the strongest when fighting together. However, even though they were using a combined technique, Sui cut through it and defeated all three without much difficulty. The protagonist said he knows the despair of losing someone important, but he no longer knows what it's like to suffer alone after having Mitsumi by his side. Tayo doesn't think that reality is something you just have to accept, but you can also change it and that's what he decided to do by going after Kuroyuri. He surprised the spy by using Sui's technique and mixing it with the techniques he learned from the Yozakura family. Tayo managed to win. The man is really surprised by the way the protagonist handles situations and out of respect for the mental resilience he carries, Kuroyuri is willing to tell him everything he knows about the boy's family accident. However, before he could speak, Kuroyuri was hit by a shot that Tayo couldn't tell where it came from, but the man still managed to leave a piece of paper for the boy. In the next scene, we see the protagonist with a map in his hand and on it, there is a place marked by Kuroyuri. Arriving at the destination, there is only one tree and that is where the man buried his daughter's body. Kuroyuri asked Tayo to bring her flowers and then instructed him to take what was inside the tree, which he said was something the protagonist really needed. Furthermore, when he arrived home, the protagonist saw that his family was very happy that he had returned safely, as everyone except Kiyoichiro was worried, Satayo so saw how lucky he was. Now we see the protagonist together with Mitsumi, Oga and Sue at a banquet that Hanagaku has prepared for them to celebrate their successful mission. However, as expected, Kiyoichiro appears on the scene and his relationship with Hanagaku always ends in a fight, so a food war breaks out between the two. But Sue prepares a dish using his skills to catch the food that is thrown. He also warns Tayo that walking on flowers can deform the bones of an amateur, so he must increase his energy and practice, at which point we can see that our protagonist's feet are bandaged. After things have calmed down and everyone has eaten, Tayo finds himself alone in a corner wondering whether to open the object he found in the tree. 
Mitsumi joins him when she realizes how strange her husband is and Taiyo vents to her that he's afraid to find out the truth because he thinks things might change and he might become like Kurigeo. Then, thinking of a way to calm him down, Mitsumi kisses the boy on the cheek, who is surprised that he wasn't expecting it. But then the girl explains that it was a way for him to understand that no matter what he does, he will always be the same and she will be by his side. Next, we see that the box was opened when Taiyo was startled by the kiss, so a ball came out of it. Suddenly, Kiyoichiro joins the couple and tells them that it's a recording of something, but then he starts freaking out because of the couple's kiss and they both have to leave. At home, Taiyo discovers that Ayaka has joined the mansion to protect him and Mitsumi from other assassins, as the bounty on his head has risen, which is why she's going to train him, so that the boy gets stronger and faster to dodge attacks. And since Ayaka is very good at what she does, she's already told Shein about the recorder. Her sister has noticed that it's a bit damaged, so she's going to fix it for Taiyo. Later, exhausted in the kitchen with Mitsumi, while she prepares tea for Kiyoichiro, the girl comments that the tea leaves the older man likes have run out and just wanting to relax. The protagonist tells her he's going to go to his bath before his tea is ready. However, the boy doesn't relax at all when Ayaka comes in to take him by surprise and, as she has set off a trap in the bath, Taiyo is the one who saves her and, in the end, an explosion occurs. At that moment, Kiyoichiro is passing by and accuses the protagonist of cheating on Mitsumi, so Taiyo runs out of the house without his clothes, running away from the man who wants to punish him. In the next scene, we see that the boy had forgotten his phone and Mitsumi went to give it to him, but when someone called Kaoru starts calling the protagonist, he comes running and takes the phone from his wife's hand. As nothing goes unnoticed by Ayaka, the spy begins to comment to Mitsumi that this smacks of betrayal. Then we see that the couple have taken Goliath for a walk and as he is a wolf dog, his true form is a large animal that can carry Mitsumi on its back. Goliath has been in the Yozakura family since Mitsumi's great-great-grandmother's generation and although he has already gotten used to Taiyo, the animal won't let the boy climb on him. So the protagonist holds onto Goliath's lead to accompany them, but the dog is so fast that the boy ends up being dragged along. As soon as they stop, some children approach the animal. Surprised by its size and Goliath can smell an explosive tied to one of those balloons. So he hugs Mitsumi and the children to protect them. However, after the smoke cleared, Goliath realized that Taiyo had protected everyone. Mitsumi is furious that they have hurt her husband, so Goliath sniffs out the smell of the bomb to a place and, on entering, finishes off whoever did it. Later, Taiyo acts strange again after receiving a phone call and says he needs to go home, and as Mitsumi doesn't want to pressure him, she agrees to leave. However, on the way back we see that Goliath has allowed the protagonist to climb on top of him with the head of the family. As soon as he arrives at the residence, Taiyo begins to be attacked by Ayaka who, with a photo in his hands, accuses him of treason. Kiyoichiro joins her to punish the boy, but before they can do anything, we discover the truth behind it all. A girl and an old man appear in the room, her name is Mamiji and she is a member of Hanagaku, and her grandfather is called Kaoru and he was the one who was calling Taiyo earlier. It turns out that the protagonist had placed an order with the two of them, which was Kiyoichiro's tea leaves and as he didn't want to worry Mitsumi, the boy had met up with them alone. Taiyo went on several quests to obtain the tea and even Kiyoichiro was surprised by his brother-in-law's efforts to please him. Despite this, he never apologizes for accusing the protagonist of betrayal, only Ayaka weeps for his actions and begs for the protagonist's forgiveness. In the next scene we see that the protagonist is still training hard to improve his skills and during his break, Taiyo finds Mitsumi looking through an album of family photos, in one of which it seems that everyone is celebrating something and his wife explains that it was when Naneo passed the spy license exam. The protagonist is interested in taking this exam, 
So Futaba explains that it's a membership card issued by the Spy Association, which is nothing more than a place where the founders created for spies to help each other. The place is an easier way to get new jobs and once you pass, you're even entitled to a spy pension. However, there are three levels and as you pass the tests, you will receive a card and benefits according to where you are. Taiyo immediately says he'd like to give it a try and Kyoichiro appears, telling the boy not to tarnish the family name, as they all passed the exam for the first time. Later, Mitsumi, Taiyo and Futaba go to Shien's room and there they find Ayaka on his knees apologizing for having decoded a program wrong. However, then a horror scene appears on the huge screen in the room and Futaba, who is terrified of ghosts, is terrified. So everyone spends the day taking turns looking after Futaba, until her older sister's fear passes. When night falls, Taiyo and Mitsumi tell Futaba a story that their mother used to read to them when they were little. Since the protagonist's wife is the first to go to sleep, he takes over the reading, but in the end, he is surprised when Futaba opens up and comments that despite all the strength she has acquired, there are still things that will scare her, because she is afraid of losing the people she loves as happened to her mother. Taiyo understands what his older sister means, as he also feels this way since losing his family. They comfort each other and then say goodbye so that the protagonist can go to sleep in his room, since the exam will take place the next day. In the next scene, we see him in the first exam and, as always, Tayo tries his best, which makes the other competitors envious of his performance, except for Sukio who expresses that he is totally in love with the protagonist. Mitsumi has seen him before and he is known for falling in love with anyone, regardless of age or gender. And the protagonist's wife is a little jealous of the situation. The other tests begin and Tayo does very well in them, always with Sukio showing his support. However, in the last test of the day, they are placed in a corridor where the floor begins to crumble rapidly and other obstacles are placed in the way. The goal of the competitors is to reach the end and get the card that will give them access to the association. Taiyo and Sukio are doing very well, until one of the competitors tries to stop the protagonist from continuing. So as Taiyo was almost disqualified, the passionate spy sacrificed himself so that the boy could get his spy card, but in the end, Taiyo didn't let him fall and with that act, Sukio takes them to the platform saying that the protagonist has passed the exam. It turns out that the lover is an inspector. He's already a silver level spy and each contestant had one assigned to them, to test if they had the criteria that the association is looking for and one of them is humanity in their spies. So that big guy who tried to eliminate the protagonist didn't pass the test. And the noises in the house that made Futaba increasingly afraid of ghosts were Kyoichiro's fault, because he was in the walls, roof and floor spying on Mitsumi and scaring his older sister. As a result, Futaba breaks her brother's bones so he can learn. In the end, everyone takes a photo at the party to celebrate Tayo's passing his exam and it also goes into the family photo album. In the next scene we see a man in the rain leaning against a wall with a wound on his arm. Suddenly, a woman approaches him and the two take an interest in each other. Now we move on to the prison and Seiji has been called to the scene because a man called Ban has escaped. Meanwhile, Taiyo is perplexed when he goes to unpack his suitcases at home and comes across an old man inside one of them. The old man comments that since he's been away for over a year, he didn't want to have to deal with the traps in the house again, so he thought it was a great idea to get into the protagonist's suitcase to avoid them. However, Taiyo used his stun gun on the man anyway, after all, he is considered an intruder since the protagonist doesn't know him. But things are soon explained when Mitsumi appears and confirms that this man really is his grandfather, called Ban. Ban then tries to take Taiyo for a walk, but Kyoichiro shows up and stops him. The older brother received a call from Seiji telling him that his grandfather had run away. So Kyoichiro already had an idea of where he was. And letting him out for a walk is out of the question, because as Ban works as an infiltrator in the prison, he knows a lot of things, 
but when he's with women, in order to impress them, Ban ends up revealing things he can't, so it's best to catch him and hand him over to Seiji. As Ban is more experienced than his grandchildren, he ends up easily breaking free of Kyoichiro's ability, so he runs off taking Taiyo with him. Before we move on to the next scene, we see Goliath carrying a photograph containing two people so that Mitsumi can see it. The protagonist had to babysit his grandfather so that he wouldn't reveal any state secrets while he was hitting on women. In an attempt to catch Ban, Taiyo jumped on the man, but as predicted, the man escaped, but he hadn't counted on the protagonist having put a glue prepared by Neneo to get him stuck on the sofa. However, the man took off his clothes without any problem, so we can see that his grandfather's shape is up to date. And after more failed attempts by Taiyo to catch him, the two decide to sit down at the bar to rest for a while. The protagonist wonders why Ban got out of prison before his mission was over and although the gentleman tells him the truth, he comments that Taiyo is still too young to understand. Today is the wedding anniversary of the Yozakura family's grandfather and grandmother, so to celebrate, Ban wanted to go to that bar to drink his love's favorite drink. When he was young, Ban didn't open up to anyone and was alone in the world, just like Taiyo, but as soon as Keiko crossed his path, everything became different. In this way, we realized that the couple shown earlier was the first time the two had seen each other. And for this beautiful story, the old man ends by telling Taiyo to cherish the present more so as never to regret it. But this was nothing new for the protagonist and he explains that Mitsumi has also made him happier than he could ever have hoped, which is why the boy strives every day to do his best for his beloved. Suddenly, Taiyo is surprised when a lady appears with a handcuff and ties Bantid, at which point we discover that she is the family's grandmother and, contrary to what we thought, she is alive. Mitsumi also shows up at the establishment and Ban wastes no time, the gentleman shows her that they are having her favorite drink and assures her that the girls only helped him choose a diamond ring for his wife. Soon, Keiko joins her husband and they both get into a car, because whether they like it or not, the couple still have work to do. Mitsumi says that she remembered it was her grandparents' wedding anniversary when Goliath showed her their photo earlier. So the girl ended up following the two of them to give Keiko Ban's exact location. So Mitsumi heard what Taiyo said about their relationship and is very happy about it. And the girl's grandparents are also happy with who she has chosen to be her husband. So we see that Ban has managed to convince his wife that they should go on a date before he goes back to prison. But within a few days he's fled the place again, yet he finds the house empty because everyone has gone to the mall to do some shopping. So we join them at the place and there, some memories come back to Taiyo of the time when he went there with his family. But moving on, the protagonist is shocked by some of the things they were able to buy by using some codes, including grenades, ammunition and many other things. Each of the siblings went after what the family needed, with only Futaba taking the opportunity to relax her muscles with a very strong masseuse and Kyoichiro buying a book. Now returning to the protagonist, he finds a lost child while getting something for Mitsumi, so he takes the girl to his wife so that the two of them can look for her father together. Suzu tells Mitsumi that her father was dragged underground by some men and at that moment, the head of the family's expression is not good. Concerned Taiyo asks what this is all about and his wife explains that this is where a black market is located with much more daring products to be bought in the other stores in the mall. As soon as they arrive on the floor, the couple find the girl's father and Taiyo saves him. However, he now turns all his attention to himself and, as we've seen before, the spy's head is in danger because he's been offered a reward that's getting bigger every day. His enemies are trying to attack him, but Kyoichiro won't allow it and it's not because he likes the boy, but because he wants to test the contents of his new book with the protagonist, where the title is, Complete Collection of Torture. And since the numbers weren't on the Yozakura family's side, the other siblings show up and they finish off their enemies. So the protagonist wonders if they haven't gone too far and we see that the mall is falling apart.
The scene cuts and we see the protagonist on the day of the accident, with his family, where he was showing his younger brother how to play a fighting game. They seemed very happy and were going camping, but because of the rain, they had to turn back. The family was taking this trip because Tayo's father used to spend a lot of time at work, so he wanted to spend more time with his family. However, since that happened, they will never have the chance to spend time together again. When the protagonist woke up, he went with Mitsumi to Shien's room and she discovered that the sphere contained the guest list for a Yozakura wedding reception. It was their parents' wedding reception and the strange thing was that the protagonist's parents had been invited. At this, Mitsumi began to cry, as she thought that Tayo's family had died because they had links to the Yozakura. They were shocked by the news, but at the moment they needed more information, so Shien sent the protagonist to the Library of the Dead. Using his spy card, he reached the library, but there was a problem. The librarian hates any noise and will kill anyone who makes a sound. Tayo managed to find the record of his family's accident and when he put the sphere in the book, some information about an organization called Tanpopo appeared. They wanted to kill the whole family and this proved that it wasn't an accident. Suddenly, the book exploded, so the librarian went after him, but thanks to Mitsumi, he managed to escape, because as the woman's hearing was extremely sensitive, shouting through Tayo's headset made the librarian fall over. At home, the protagonist went to talk to Kiyoichiro about what he had discovered and did so while being tortured. The older brother told him that this organization was also the one who murdered their mother and is after Mitsumi, but with the information he had, he couldn't catch them. However, with the new information Tayo got, he was able to discover a suspect. As Tayo's father worked in the medical field, he researched the hospital and discovered that in the month before the accident, 15 people in the medical field died in accidents and the link between all of them is the director of a clinic, called Makoto. So they decided to go after this man, and the next day the protagonist went undercover with Mitsumi to his clinic. The disguise was the most uncomfortable the protagonist had ever worn, even more so because of the heavy object that Kiyoichiro forced him to put under his clothes. When they entered Makoto's room, they were attended to, but Tayo didn't see anything suspicious about the man. As the protagonist stayed in hospital, Mitsumi, who was also in disguise, was looking after her husband and said that she would like to spend her final moments with him in that peaceful way. Tayo said that he would also like that to happen, but he wants to leave before she does, because he wouldn't know how to live without her around. During the night, when Makoto left, the protagonist managed to get into his room and when he put a USB stick made by Shein into the man's computer, he discovered that he was from Tanpopo and they were after the Yozakura family because of their peculiar biology. Basically, they planned to use the genes found in the family leader's blood to create a drug and intend to mass produce it as a biological weapon. Suddenly, Makoto appeared and tried to attack the protagonist. When the disguise was cut, he couldn't believe that Tayo was still alive and when he tried to finish him off, he couldn't because of the weight on the boy's body. Tayo managed to shoot the man, but he stopped the thunder bullet with his hands and after creating a strong light, he left with his computer. However, Tayo had already obtained the data he needed and would do anything to protect his wife. Well folks, that was the summary of Mission Yozakura Family. If you liked the video and want the sequel, leave a like and comment below. I hope all is well with you. See you next time.